Welcome to Moon Harbor Heroes. Today's issue is Faces Issue 9, The Hunt for Hyun. On the cover, a hawking minotaur made of lead in a paper hat scoops ice cream into cones. Violet, Carl, and Felix are lined up to take a cone. Amongst the tubs of ice cream, we can see a dripping tub labeled Poison. We turn the page and our story begins. Uh, I would imagine this as a kind of a exploring the hero sort of page where like a you know, full page, they, info page. Yeah, an info page where they're talking about the hero and their powers and what they do. Awesome, let's do it. Let's do an info page. And this page would be dedicated to Ryder. And while it just kind of goes over his powers, you know, his super speed, godlike beauty. Oh, however that may be defined. And that um, has like a little tag that just says newly acquired. It goes over, there's a section on there that goes over how the, uh, the Henshin device works. Um, and that it, it, basically it mentions that the Henshin device is actually two pieces. It is a power coin, a small coin that basically looks like a battery of type sorts. Uh, but it's inscribed with almost like sigils that identify the power set. And then the Henshin device itself, which can come in many different flavors. And it says flavors many different flavors and styles, um, with Felix's being a cell phone. It explains that without the power coin, the Henshin device does nothing, and that the power coins can, and in the past, have been used with other devices. They don't have to be used with this one. But it does also explain that, e and it's really quick, really tiny, that each coin, each rider has their own coin, and that when they become a rider, they gain their own coin. And so it's okay. not a shared power set. It's that whenever the writer decides, whenever the previous writer decides to pass on the powers, a new coin is created from whether it be Divine Realm or wherever the powers come from, a new coin is created. And we are going to cut over to uh, Carl in the apartment. So after freaking out and, and getting everybody out, Carl looks at Bert and says, um, I think this amulet is bad news. What should we do with it? Bert kind of steps forward and like reaches out, but doesn't quite touch you. Like he's still gun shy from the pain that amulet put him through. He says, you're right. We have to find a way to get rid of it. I have some connections I, I might be able to use. Are you asking him for help? Cause I believe you have a move that relates to that. I am asking him for help. When you approach your creator or caretaker with a problem, tell them what uh, I'm yeah, right what you need to achieve and they will offer something you need bert has a friend who works at monarch power who still owes him some favors and he thinks that uh, they might have like a containment system that can hold the amulet okay that sounds good bert contact me as soon as you can if you've got anything i'm going to see what's wrong with Ryder now and as you turn he, he puts his hand on your shoulder and looks you in the eye and says, uh, Carl, remember, never be, never be afraid to ask for help. Sweet. I like it. He steps off in the back room. We get this panel where like, you're stepping back out of the hallway into uh, the living room, which is a bit, a bit broken up. It's not huge amounts of damage, but it's, the coffee table is broken. The couch is probably toppled. Uh, the TV is on its side, but uh, is not broken and is still playing telenovelas on mute. And we are going to cut outside. Um, you can walk outside yeah. whenever you think, want during this. I think there might maybe be one more panel where while okay. Carl leaves the house, like behind him, all of the stuff starts rearranging and like a bunch of ants appear here and put the TV back and then a bunch of ants put the couch back. And oh, I love that. Fl I love that. the pillow. And then the last bunch of ants finally closes the door and it reforms outside. When the door closes behind you, we're gonna, I'm going to put one more panel of Bert, and he's on the phone, and he says, and he's just got a smile on his face, looking at, like, watching you leave, and he just says, yeah, I need some help. Uh, yeah, my kid needs it. And he hangs up. Aww. And we're going to cut outside. So we have uh, Faye, I think you're, like, standing. We got you watching uh, the dust of the uh, motorcycle. Oh, I was definitely flying behind him. I mean, I was oh, okay. a bit too far behind, but I was like, I wasn't going to stay in chat. I was going to take off behind him. Okay. Uh, Violet? Yeah, I'm going to fly right behind him. Um, uh, we're going to need a couple panels of uh, Felix like finishing up 
searching the office. Uh, you want to describe the state of the office at this point, like late searching. The office is in shambles. Um, I am pulling books out, looking for possibly a secret compartment, maybe a secret compartment book. Every book I pull out, yeah, you see books on the floor that are kind of not torn open, but most of tossed down to the floor, open up, I, you know, open and tossed down. Terrible, terrible, terrible book uh, manners. Um, but you got books all over the place. And I'm basically, I'm thinking, okay, he's either put it in a book, maybe there's a secret button somewhere. So I'm looking, I'm, you know, I'm searching the bookshelves. Uh, again, as okay. uh, as we've shown before, you see like multiples of Felix around the room as he's using his super speed. Really not realizing he has been using his super speed to speed around the room as he does this. Okay, and we are going to run a custom move now. When you search Leo's office, uh, roll with superior. On a hit, you are going to find some kind of clue or advantage and tell me what it is. On a 10 plus, you're going to do, uh, do an additional one. That is not a hit. That okay. is not even close to a hit. On a miss, tell me one advantage you find, one advantage or clue you find, and the rider, uh, the dark rider, gets a, dis- a, a advantage. Um, you're going to discover that at some point. So, what mm-hmm. did you find? And how about we get like a panel of you discovering this as like, I think Violet's like coming through the door right now. I see that there is a button under the desk. Just a solo button sitting at the back of the desk under the desk center area. Uh, It's like an old mahogany, 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 mahogany style desk (laughs) with a small button on the back that uh, presses open. Um, Yeah. Okay, um, and I think you press that, and what happens um, when you press that? And Violet, you're going to be walking in as this happens. Uh, as soon as I press that, the one of the bookshelves uh, clicks, and then just swings open just a slight bit, like maybe an inch or so. And Violet, I said you walk in, but like if you want to hover up to a window, however you enter. Uh, no, I walk in because I get yelled at for flying in always. Felix comes out from under the desk, sees Violet, sees the door, sees the, the bookshelf open, and he's like, Hey, good thing you're here. I'm looking for an item about as big as my hand. Uh, should hold a coin. Would you like to help? <laughs> and he says it in a way that is like urgent, like he's kind of freaking out. I just look over at him. I'm like, uh, I need colors and descriptions to be able to see this stuff. And I want to make a joke, but it doesn't feel like the right time. So I'm going to, it's like, so if you could give me a little bit more descriptions, I can help you look. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. (laughs) At that two things happen. I think a Carl arrives. So however that panel look from all around them, suddenly there's like a stream of insects coming in. And Carl farms up with his big grin on his face and goes, hi. Where, where does he come in from, though? Like, from everywhere. even if it's all around, like, how does he come in? Does he come through the, the vents and stuff? Well, maybe we get, like, a couple panels. And, like, if you look back at the previous panels, you can notice a couple insects, like, crawling in under the windowsills. Yeah. I really like that. Yeah. Sorry, I can finish up that panel. Okay, I was just going to say hi, and then... Do you need some help searching? And then I think we get a panel of the uh, the bit of the bookcase that popped open. It kind of creaks open. There's a loud creak as it opens further. Uh, Ryder, what do we see behind there? I'm going to swing. I'm going to like just zip over to the door, uh, open it up, and see the Hinchin device and its coin sitting there together. Uh, they're not inside each other, but they are like the, there's like a plaque on the wall. and. I'm going to grab them off the wall and turn around and look at uh, Violet and Carl and be like, Uncle was captured. My dad has him. He says he's going to kill him unless he gets my powers. And we get a panel where the, um, the amulet that Carl is wearing is freaking out because there's another power amulet in the room. There's actually two other power amulets in the room, by the way. Yeah, I'm, I just... It dawned on me that it would really freak out over seeing other amulets that give you powers because it. Yeah, now now dawned. there's now there's three amulets that grant power in the room because yeah, 
so uh, uh, Felix always has one on him, and then he's picking one out of the wall as well. I feel like it would be like jealous, scared that something. Yeah, you're feeling a lot of that. Those roll emotions rolling out of it. Uh, I'm going to jump back a sec though, because I think uh, Felix just shared a vulnerability or weakness. So yep. if you want to trigger that team move. So when you share vulnerability or weakness with someone, tell them a secret about your legacy, including your own true feelings about it, to clear a condition and give them influence over you. You have a choice. You can tell a secret if you want, um, but if you do, you'll get to clear a condition. And I will let you clear two conditions if you give them both influence. Okay, I have no conditions to clear. I will let you mark one potential if you give them both the influence and, okay. um, and share that secret. About 15, 20 years ago, my grandfather gave up his powers. My grandfather was the first writer of the city. My uncle took over, but my dad wanted the powers more. There was a fight, and long story short, the two power coins were created. One dark, one light. Same power. The problem is, is that my dad wants to finish and complete that power. That'll be stronger than anything, anything I can imagine. The way these panels are, are we're getting like very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Very like impressionist comic style where there's no fine details of the scenes you're, you're describing with like okay. voiceover captions. You dig yeah. that? Yeah, quite. You mark your potential and uh, Carl and are you going by Carl or Myriad? these days that I call you. I'm Carl. Yeah. Okay. And uh, Carl and uh, Violet take influence. So I think, did Carl already have influence over Ryder? I did, yeah. Okay, yes. so what labels do you want to shift? Plus Savior minus Mundane, maybe? Plus Savior minus Mundane. Okay. I'll accept cool. that. And Violet now has influence. Um, so, any responses from... No, I'm just kind of looking confused. Yeah, I'll go with that too. It's not outside my depth, but it's like all, it's just it all hit at one time, so I have nothing to say, sort of deal. Okay, cool. Um, Carl's gonna add, do all of them have cool bikes? <laughs> uh, Felix kind of laughs for a moment and says, actually, yeah. Yeah, we all do. Sweet. So that sounds like that might have been a comforter support. I think that would be, yeah. I feel like coming from Carl, that that was an attempt at a comforter support. Carl? Yeah, I guess so. All right, so go ahead and roll plus mundane. Uh, six. Violet could help. You guys technically have one team. I, I'm like, so are there more riders outside of your grandfather? You said your grandfather was the first of the city, but that doesn't mean the city was always in existence. So I, I'm going to ask Felix. I can see how that's a, a helping because it's Violet, like the whole team tape, taking an interest. Does that help you? Like, does Felix see, see that as like helping? Felix looks at Violet and kind of confused and then stops her and goes, you know what? I've actually never asked. Remind Wait, me so to ask that whenever we save Hyun. Okay. Like uh, that's a comforting sure. thing. Like that's a, hey, this lineage may go back further than I know. I dig it. So um, <clears throat> on a hit, they hear you. Uh, they mark potential clear condition or shift labels if they open up to you. I think you've opened up in that yeah. exchange. I'll mark potential. All right, cool. Violet, with this conversation kind of where it is, you notice a glint in the bottom of the, I don't know how well we described this, where you all found the Henshin device. You notice a glint there. I assume Violet's the, the curious type. We get a panel of you stepping forward to look. Lane, uh, sticking out of a small bundle of what looks like handwritten papers, you see uh, about half of the probability coin peeking out. Huh. I'm going to reach down and pick it up, and I'm going to be like, uh... Hey, look, it's our old friend. <laughs> Why didn't I see that? Be huh. Could that be useful to <clears throat> us? Like, he looks what? at Violet, and he's like, will that be useful to us? Well, it it could if we flip it and it turns out well, but that's a 50-50 chance. Um, can Carl attempt to ask his amulet what it knows about the um, coin? Uh, yeah, I'm going to have you roll to prevent. Uh, five. <laughs> uh, 
Make sure you all mark potential for all these terrible roles. Uh, <laughs> you hear a, a a voice, the voice resonate in your mind that says, that is not for you to know. Carl's internal voice just goes, sweet, just asking. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love this group. In Violet's other hands, uh, that bundle of papers, at least Felix, probably Violet living here for a bit, uh, do recognize um, Leo's handwriting. Hey, uh, Ryder, this is for you. I, I'm not really, it's like, I, this might be for you. The, it's uh, Leo's writing. It's not really my business to see what he was scribbling. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Uh, I'm going to grab the piece of paper, uh, look over it, and read. try to read what it says. Going through I'm it, tired. it's a lot of scribbled notes about the Dark Rider. It seems like Leo's been doing reconnaissance and following up on rumors about the Dark Rider for five or six months now. In it, you discover that the Rider has some kind of significant advantage that you didn't know about before. What is it? Um, I see what what I see there in in the notes is I see um, I see some scribblings of uh, of course I see scribblings about the Dark Rider, but I also see scribblings pointed to a creature I once thought was just myth, and it seems that maybe this creature it's like a Cthulhu style creature as actually maybe real. Excellent. Okay, cool. And looking quickly through the rest of Leo's notes, uh, you're also finding that there's a lot of like connections to a cult. And some of the things you're seeing in there described very much fit the cult of the White Death, the group that you and Faye just recently infiltrated. As I look over this, I, uh, as I, the last thing I want to say is before I, as I look over this, um, in the last panel, or maybe not the last panel, maybe the close to the last panel, but in the last panel, I want one word to come out of my mouth, and that word is Fay, because of what happened at the skyscraper before with the cultist, and that's the first thing that comes to my mind. I want to set the next scene probably a day or two later. No one's heard from Fay. Um, her voice, her phone's gone straight to voicemail. Can we get you all together, like hanging out outside Superine? We can set it wherever. Um, yeah, I think we can meet at the mall. I think I would have spent the day searching for clues as to where Dark Rider's at. So I'd have been, you know, skulking around during that. And there may not even be a scene of, there may not be scenes in the panel, but that's what he would have been doing. It may just say it in off text. And right. When we meet, I can give them whatever information I may have found. Yeah, absolutely. I want the scene to start like the, the first panel when they show like, I think it would be like a wide panel of the mall and um, Ryder entering the mall and he would spot Carl sitting in the food court with a massive grin on his face and uh, a drink with a giant novelty straw. I mean, so maybe we get Violet and Felix walking up to Carl with Violet explaining what she was explaining. Yeah, yeah. I'd love that. It's like, uh, all right. So Violet, you, before you jump into the text, do you want to give us like what the inside of the mall looks like? It's kind of your baby. <laughs> like at least the food court yeah so we walk into the food court and across from the food court there the, there's your traditional taco taco stand man i have to come up with gimmicky names i'll think about that later though you got your taco place you got a burger joint you got a chocolate shop across from the food court like i'd have to say a directly adjacent to it there's like a kid play area so the little kids can run it's like while everyone's eating can go and jump in the ball pit and stuff you see off in the corner that they're throwing a little bit of a birthday party in the corner and i think uh the, one of the shops that's right behind like carl is this little ice cream shop called the cold war which is just completely empty there's like one lone um, employee standing in the back under like a flickering light and the place just straight up looks haunted and cobwebbed. I walk in and I'm like, so I found some interest and I stop and I look at Carl. I'm like, Carl, what, what are you doing? There's this place where you can get the best drinks and they gave me a giant straw. Well, um, how did you, um, you know, that's a question safe for later. Never mind. I assume we get like a panel of the two of you sliding into the booth or the table with your food. 
Yeah. And I think I said, we're also going to like interspersed, like high above the people want, like in the mall, um, which is probably a fairly busy day. We're seeing every once in a while one of those drones zipping around that we've been seeing for a few issues now. That's nice. It, it's almost become a novelty of our city now. So it's <laughs> not even yeah, it's considered. Like, it's, like, yeah, it's like, actually. They're actually, all looking for you, Violet. <laughs> okay, so is Violet, are we depowered right now? I mean, when I say depowered, I'm I mean not powered. in costume. Yeah, I'm Violet's, in costume. Yeah, Violet, Violet isn't in costume. She just has style. Oh, um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Did you guys find anything other than your drink? I, I found out that this mall used to have some dark energy and cult followings behind it, if that counts for anything. It actually might. Who has been searching for clues in this whole thing? Who's been actively researching, searching, doing whatever you think might help? Uh, Ryder. I don't know if anyone else had. <laughs> I've been looking very hard for kick-ass bikes because it's all I got from the previous conversation. Uh, Violet, have you been helping Ryder or searching on your own in for Ryder stuff? I did you know? trifle through some of the stuff and then it kind of led my way over to the mall. Go ahead and roll plus superior. Because okay. one of the well, the option was either to find a clue on the cult or find a clue about Dark Rider. So this definitely would qualify. Okay, on A9, uh, tell me a advantage or a clue that you've had. I found one of the cultists that it led me to. Um, or not a direct cultist, but kind of an underground agent that uh, Ryder's uh, uncle had. And where he was getting some of his information from. Okay, uh, cool. And he was talking about how there was a lot of inner workings around the mall, but there wasn't any, any real specifics because he wasn't... He was in the cult, but he wasn't in the upper echelons where they were starting to tell the cultists anything pretty detailed. But we do know that there is a focus around the mall. Okay, excellent. And Ryder, you can roll as well if you would like, but unless you roll a 10 plus, you are also going to be giving an advantage or a, uh, a disadvantage that you found for you. So basically on a 7 to 9, you get a clue or an advantage, and so does R Dark Ryder. On a 10 oh, okay. plus, just you get it. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to try that. And that's a 10. If you want to explain it now, you can. If not, uh, we could jump back into the scene. Yeah, I was going to explain it in character. Okay. So I think uh, jumping back to Violet was talking about the mall. I found some uh, information in the papers that your uncle had. I found one of the cultists that they're not really a cultist. They're more like an undercover agent that your uncle seems to have connections with. And they said that there's a lot of uh, focus around this mall within the cult organization, but there's no real big details why as of yet writer's gonna kind of take it in and say okay i asked outlet to help me out and see if she could find anything she handed me this and he pulls something out of his pocket and lays on the thing but he pulls he pulls a what looks to be a map out and lays it down and he goes she handed me this but didn't tell me where it was to does this look familiar to any of you and he kind of rolls not rolls out it's like a city plan or city hall map but it rolls out a map in front of the group <laughs> Does it look familiar to anyone? I mean, I was going to do a scene in a second where it turns out that Carl has been all over the city making a list of all the dark bicycles and, and, and <laughs> motorcycles in the city, which was just going to be a joke that I was going to do, but it could mean that I know maybe what the map is about. If you can tie it to the map, you do not need to roll. You can just tell me what the map is. Okay. Oh, that's where all the ice cream shops are because it's a map of the city with dots and he's like, that's every of those dots has an ice cream shop. Ice cream shop? Wait. And I know some front for the cultists. So you're saying... Oh. Guys, I have a way to figure this out. Violet gets up and walks over to the Cold War and orders one mint chocolate chip ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> I think we get like five or six full panels of like from you uh the, the people still at the table's perspective watching violet like slowly walk over 
talk to the uh, shopkeep, but you can't really see what's happening. There's like, um, you can't see what's being exchanged because Violet's in the way, and then Violet turns around with a thing of ice cream and just walks back. It's a legit shop. Sorry, guys. The ice cream's kind of not great, but it reminds me a lot of Burke's cookies. So, I mean, I, I could eat it. Okay, so to recap, so Carl explains to them, so, hey, guys, so I was looking around the whole city for bikes, and I found a bunch of dark bikes. And then I assume that um, Felix would explain we're not looking for bikes. And, and, and then he looks at the map yeah. and goes, oh, these are locations for all of the ice cream shops in the city. And then they have a short conversation about that, and Violet walks over and gets the ice cream. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah I like it. Awesome. I like it. Wait, uh, Carl. Were there any of these bikes in front of one of these ice cream shops? What color bike? I saw a green one. I saw seven yellow ones. I'm going to have Carl roll a plus superior as well. It's going to be the same kind of roll, but any advantage you create has to be bike related. I got a three. Okay. Mark that potential, baby. Mark that <laughs> so potential. We get a couple panels of like Carl listing different colors of bikes. And um behind Carl we see the drones start um forming into a circle that starts spinning and the portal opens up. And Violet, since you created this character and I love it, do you want to introduce Skizzy uh jumping through the portal? Yeah. So all of a sudden in the middle of this mall Inside the child's ball pit, a giant minotaur man jumps out. It's like he stands around eight foot tall and he sits there and he goes, Yar! My name is Captain Skizzy. He's got skin made of lead, so when he comes down, he comes down with a foot. Does he crack the floor? Yes, very much oh, so. I love it. Violet just kind of stares over and looks over. It's like, ah. Captain Skizzy to brighten my day. <laughs> Friend of yours, um, Violet? And we are triggering a move. A roll plus superior. I got a 10. Okay. I told you I'm oh. not going to roll under a freaking 7. <laughs> On a hit, tell the team one important detail that you know about them. So this guy's name is Captain Skizzy. And, well, he's actually the Emperor Skizzy of his own planet. Uh, a planet or a place known as uh, the Labyrinth Planet. Uh, there's no water on this planet, but he really wants to be a pirate. So I just play along and call him Captain Skizzy. He's, he's one day going to be a pirate king. I'm going to say that uh, the thing that's different from what you remember is um, Skizzy always wore a, uh, a pirate hat. Yeah. And he is no longer wearing it. So on a 10+, plus, ask the GM a follow-up question. They will answer it honestly. I think I would just ask Skizzy, <laughs> to be honest. That's the kind of person Violet is. She'd just walk up to them and be like, so uh, what's going on? Uh, what happened to your hat? Skizzy is huffing and puffing and getting ready to charge. And like he starts to yell out, Violet! And then you start talking. He just kind of is taken aback and goes, I, Maestro, Ma Maestro won't let me wear it anymore. But, uh. but you, you're coming with me. The maestro has me searching for you. And he uh, points towards the portal and gestures for you to uh, step through. After he um, says that, um, I want uh, Felix to just kind of stand up and just appear in front of Violet and, go, and just say something like, you'll have to go through us to take her. So I, I'm going to interject and be like, no, no, hold on. I, I think we can handle this because, I think because the benevolent... Captain Skizzy that I know knows exactly is always up for some tidbits of piece of of information that would that would always pique his interest. Oh, okay. Well, it sounds like you tried to floor. provoke them. Yep. Once again, we are rolling plus superior. <laughs> <laughs> it's the superior I, day. I, I this... picked a good stat. <laughs> At this point, by the this way, you, so level. In, you can see in the background of the panels that Carl is gone. Oh, okay. I got a 10 again. He kind of puffs and he snuffs a little bit and then he looks and he goes, what do you have? So, have you heard about these um, 
ancient Egyptians. Apparently, they've stolen from uh, a galactic ship some ancient tre uh, pirate treasure. Uh, I don't know if that piques your interest or anything, um, but it seems like it'd be a damn shame for it to sit in some dusty uh, museum in Egypt than to be in the benevolent uh, pirate king's hands. Just, just thought you'd be interested. I want you to go ahead and pierce the mask real quick. So roll plus mundane. I got a five. He stares at you, and I'm gonna. Ask, and this is going. I'm basically gonna have him ask you a question off the list, and you have to answer honestly uh, for Violet. Okay. Um, the question he is asking is, "What are you really planning?" I'm planning to send you over and find Jerry instead of me because there's a portal over there that uh, Jerry wants to meet up with me later over in Egypt. And I'm feeling like sending my problems his way instead of dealing with you guys directly. Basically, I'm sending him to Jerry. Because Jerry okay. was supposed to visit because... Who they're actually looking for is Jerry. And I think I think Maestro yeah. made that clear to you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but they're trying to get me and I really don't want to go. I don't want to be part of that whole situation. He but... kind of looks at you and goes, You better be telling the truth or I'll be back. And he, he turns to step through the portal. What do you do? Um, I kind of wave, and I'll say, okay, have fun. Felix, by the way, is literally just standing there, kind of arms crossed, just watching this interaction. And I kind of look over, and I see uh, Ryder, and I'm like, dude, we don't have to fight all our problems with violence. Sometimes we just got to give them a little bit of what they want, and then they'll go away. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Good you job. see the uh, the drone portal like popping, um, but closing, and the drones dissipating. Do we want to jump to Carl? Where is Carl? Well, at this point, Felix and Violet can hear a loud slurping noise, and um, Carl is back in his seat, but with like a different drink with a different novelty straw. I turn around, and before Ryder can interject with some weird question, I'm like, have you tried a root beer float yet? Those things are absolutely amazing. The final panel is an introspection panel for Carl, where he wonders why beer would float. Moon Harbor Heroes is produced by Anthony Sheets and T.P. Huth and edited by Anthony Sheets. Anthony can be found on Twitter at Icy New Year or at IcyNewYear.com. T is the host of Incubator on Air, a new play podcast available on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, and Google Play. They can be found at T. Playwright on Twitter or at TPHuth94 on Instagram. Faces is GM by me, Anthony Sheets. Carl is played by Simon Meskins. You can find him on Twitter as Jill Bereka. Faye is played by T.P. Huth. Ryder Typhon is played by Kaido King. Kaido is a Twitch personality and loves their three mischievous cats. You can find them at the Versian on Twitter and as Kaido King on Twitch.tv. Violet Starling is played by Zweifang. Our logo was designed by Beautiful Beasties. She can be found on Instagram at beastly.doodles or at patreon.com slash beautifulbeasties. The music in this issue is Black Vortex by Kevin McLeod. A link to his website and the license will be in the show notes. If you want to get a hold of us, email us at moonharborheroes at gmail.com or find us on Twitter at moonharborcast. If you enjoyed this issue, please leave us a review on iTunes and tell a friend. Word of mouth and five-star reviews are really the best way for us to keep bringing these stories to more people. And uh, thanks for helping us save the world. We'll see you next issue.